بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على نبينا وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين Today, inshallah, we take the third of the types of verbs which belong to chapter 2. The third type of verbs we said when, huh? when it is mubahat. And that's it. Well, it is mubahat and that's it. And what do we mean by the mubahat? Huh? Hmm? Two identical letters. Which? The ayn and the lam. So when the ayn and the lam are identical, this is what we call mubahat. Mudahaf, as if the middle letter was multiplied. Okay? Because at or mudahaf means multiplied. So as if we have doubled the middle letter. Okay? In chapter 1, the mudahaf, was it transitive or intransitive? Transitive. Transitive. Here is going to be intransitive. Here is going to be interesting, okay, the opposite. So, here it's going to be lazim. Here it is going to be lazim. So, when it is muta'addin, transitive, muta'addin, transitive, muta'addin, uh, it is chapter one. And when, is, when, when it is lazim, Lazim, intransitive, lazim, intransitive is going to be chapter 2. And the example to that is, for example, ba, ba, ba. Ta ba ba. Ta ba ba. And ta ba ba is perishing. Okay? Perishing. So now we want to bring Tababa on the scales of both Fa'ala and Yef Eilu. Yef Eilu. Okay? Fa'ala. We shouldn't even say Tababa. So the tap and the back and the back. Okay? So the fat of the word is what? The tap. So we bring the tap here and we give the tap according to what's given to the fat. A fat hat. Then the aim? Huh? Bad. Then the noun? Abba as well. What does it read? Tababa. Now Tababa, we're going to, to do the same thing we did to Adada. Remember? When it was transitive, we're going to do the same, the same here. That means we are aiming to merge the first identical letter into the second. And the only way we can do that is that if the first identical letter is silent. silent. Very good. So we're going to drop this halakha here. 
to be able to merge the first identical letter into the second, so we can say what? Tab ba. Like the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tab yada abi lahabin wa tab. Tab yada abi lahabin wa tab. Is this clear? Huh? We do another one. Hmm? One more. One more. Give you the hat. Okay. We're 
trying to bring it on the scale of fa'ala, which is half, <coughs> la, la, ha, la, la, halala, halala. What's with halala? It's a little heavy. Huh? It's heavy. It's heavy. Why is it heavy? We have two, we have two moving, identical letters <coughs> in a row. We don't want to have that. We want to silence the first identical letter. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. We want to merge the first identical letter into the second. In, in order to do that, we said, if you want to merge two identical letters together, the first has to be silent. The first has to be silent. So, it is not silent now. What do we do? The second letter is not silent. What do we do? Hmm? We silence. We silence it. So, there you go. Now this, after merging, will, uh, after merging, it will be, like so, What do you read now? Halla. <laughs> so Halla means settled or became permissible. Because it's lasting. Remember, all the verse that we're going to take here is our lasting in this way, in this third way now. This is a principle, is it? What's what principle? Uh, the joining of two identities. Yes. In this case, yes. Okay. Halla. 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 What is Okay. Huh? These letters have to have the same character or not? No. Not necessarily. And yet, people, did it have the same haraka? No. Then, yaf'ilu. See? Yaf'ilu. Yah. Li. Lu. Yah. Li. Lu. Yah. Li. Lu. Can you say yah. Li. Lu? Can you? Yah. Lilu. Lilu. Do you find it easy all the time? Huh? Little difficult. Little difficult. Yeah, Lilu. Okay? So they want to make it easy. So the heaviness is caused from what? From the first man having a halakha. Because when the first lamb has a halakha, and the lamb right after it has a halakha also, this will cause the heaviness. So we want to dispose of this kasara on the first lamb. Okay? Now I told you, if you want to dispose of a halakha, if the letter before it is free, give it to the, to the preceding letter. Okay? So now we're going to give this kasra, which is on the uh, first lamb to what? To the ha. What's the position of the ha in the word? Fa. This is the fa. Okay? So it will be after merging. Yeah? Hilu. And at first it was what? Yeah. 
Det er hellig lov. Like so. See? We took this kasra on the land and we gave it to what? The ha. Then ya hindu. After merging the first lamb into the second, will be what? Huh? Yeah? Hello. Halla? Ya hello. Halla? Ya hello.
So how do we do that? Since there's an easy way of doing it here. Here, we didn't compromise. Okay? We didn't do it the easy way. We did it the hard way. We had to fight. Okay? But here, huh? there was a truce made here. There was no fighting involved here. Okay? Why? Because since the Kha is vacant of any Haraka, huh, we are able to move the Haraka of the first to, to the one preceding it. So let's do that. Yeah. And see how we give the Kha, this Kesara. How does this read? Yaakhir Ru. After merging, it will be? Huh? Yaakhir Ru. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah number 16, verse number 26. فَدَمَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَأَتَى اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ مِنَ الْقَوَاعِدِ فَخَرَّ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّقَفُ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ What is it? Okay. Alright. Clear? Ah, people. So these words which Ayn and Lam are the same, they call Mudaf. They call Mudaf. Okay. You have also Khafafa. The Kha and the Fa and the Fa. Which means becoming light. Light. Light in terms of weight. Becoming light. Mm -hmm. So, after merging, how is the mod form going to be from this? Khaffa. <laughs> Khaffa. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry about making mistakes. When you're learning, don't worry about making mistakes. Because you're just learning. You're learning. You have to make mistakes. And as a matter of fact, if you don't make mistakes, you're not learning. And if you don't ask, you're not learning. Right? So, it is okay. Because you making a mistake is a chance of you being rectified. If you being rectified, you learn. Don't worry. Everyone who learned made mistakes. Everyone. In this dunya. Everyone. Right? Yeah? After becoming light. Becoming light. Light. Opposite of heavy. Khafa. Ahsan. Ah, see. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُمْ فَأُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ This is where... Hmm? Ah! You brought the verse, where is it? This is in Surat. Al-A'raf. Surah number 7, verse number 9. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ And as for those 
those who scale will be lies. Surah 7, verse number 9. And there's another uh, surah. Yes. And towards the end. Ahsant. Which one is it? Huh? <laughs> Which verse? Huh? Huh? Yes, from the from the beginning. What's the verse? In the first chapter, we would say what? But here we said because it's on the scale of Yafiru. So Yafiru is. Now, the only difference between the month and the Mubarak is the tense. The month is in the past, the Mubarak is now. So, Yahifu is he becomes light. Or he is becoming light. Or it is becoming light. Yahifu, now. Khafa, before. Yahifu, now. Wa'adeh.
بل رجزا I told you the ذال stays on the line and the زاي goes under the line this is not ذا this is a ذا 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 is by you pressing the tip of your tongue against the upper teeth ذا be careful because if you say in Al-Fatiha Al-Nazina your prayer is invalid be careful so Al-Nazina the, the, the just like you saying the T-H-E the, the Why your prayer will be invalid? Because if you say Al-Lazina, you did not say Al-Lazina. And if you did not say Al-Lazina, you did not read a word of Al-Fatiha. And if you did not read a word of Al-Fatiha, you did not read Al-Fatiha. And if you did not read Al-Fatiha, Okay? Inshallah, we'll take all of this. We'll okay, read to the class of al when we explain the prayer, we mention all the mistakes that result in the Fatiha not being read, and thus the prayer not being read. But Zalla Yadilu, Zalla is to be to become what humiliated. Zalla he became humiliated. Huh? Zalla. Zalla. Which one? Dalala. They don't say Dalala, they say Dilla. Dilla. And in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in one of his du'as, Allahumma inni ha'udhu bika min al-aynati wa dhillati wa al-maskana. I seek your refuge from al-ayna wa dhilla wa al-maskana. Wa dhilla wa al-maskana. Wa al-maskana. Muskala is the verbal noun of muskin. Tayyib, Zalla, Yadidu. Zalla, Yadidu, Ha, we're coming to that, inshallah. Ba. Ah. Ba. 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 با با نوت ضا نوت ضا نوت دا با 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 Okay. 
okay, it's go just going to, if you're going to press it upward towards whatever is parallel to it. L, ball, L, ball, and if you focus on the left side, it's better. L, ball, don't twist your tongue. Don't do this, ball, no, don't twist. <laughs> You don't have to twist your tongue at all. It's already there. It's already in the right place. All you have to do is slightly just push it up. Yeah, slightly up and forward. L, L, do. That's all. Okay. So, Fadla, what does it mean? Went astray. Dalla yadidu. Anzalla. Huh? Zalla means fell into error. Fell into error. taken against you, but falling into error is not. Correct? I think I pressed the button here. No, no, sorry. Wait. Escape. 
escape to Allah. They say the only one whom you escape to is Allah. The rest you escape from. <coughs> but Allah, if you want to be safe from his torment, you have to escape to him, not from him. Allah. Because there's no way out from the punishment of Allah except to Allah. Society. This. What is the meaning of the word? 
The meaning of the, of, the, of the verse is that if you worship Allah alone and set up not partners with Him in worship, then Allah will give you succession in the land and He will give you the authority to practice your religion and He will exchange your fear with safety and security. And Allah does not break, your, break His promise. So if you don't see those things, that means you haven't done the condition. You have not done the condition. <coughs> Simple. Simple. Okay? Do we, is there a principle which we know of until now that we can apply on wa'ada? Can it? Are there going to be any changes applied from principles that we might have uh, studied before together? Huh? What do you think? No. Ghost is clear. Nothing. So it stays as it is. Wa'ad. Wa'ad. Huh? Why? Okay. <laughs> but a change is going to happen in the mobile. Let's see what's going to happen. The ya as as it is, ya and the fa sukun and the ain against the ain and the dal against the lam. Huh? Ya. Eidu. Yao Eidu. Yao Eidu. Yao Eidu. But did Allah say Yao ya Eidu? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa id yaidu kumullahu ihda ta'ifataini anna laku. Yaidu. وَإِذْ يَعِدُ وَإِذْ يَعِدُكُمُ اللَّهِ So did Allah say يَعُ وَعِدُ Or did they say يَعِدُ So what happened? So there's something that happened here. And this principle is simple. It says when the Wow falls between its two enemies, which are the Fatha and the Kasra. Oh. It's on. It's on your in your inbox. Oh, okay. So why are you taking mine then? Oh, okay. So. When the war falls between its two enemies, its two enemies are the Fatha and the Kasra. Because the Fatha doesn't suit the war, neither does the Kasra. What suits the war is what? Is the Bamma. They say the, the Bamma is the mother of the war because it begets it when it's prolonged. And the Fatha is the mother of the Elif. Because prolong a fatha, ah, ah, prolong it. Ah, uh, uh, oh, and it pops out. <laughs> and the, the kasra is the mother of what? Yeah. The ya. Ya. E. E. Ah, let it go. E, there you go, a ya comes up. Wafi? No. So, 
Those are two enemies of the wow. When the wow falls between its two enemies, it is dropped. Dropped. Yachiru. It falls down. Huh? The wow should be second. The wow should be. We're going to see that. The wow will be dropped. The wow with the sukun will be dropped. So now let's drop it. Did you write this principle? Oh, have you written this principle now? Can I erase it? Can I erase it? Yeah. Yes. It's two enemies. It's two. It's two enemies. When we say it's two enemies, this implies that it's different. It's two. Get it? If we say between two enemies, then you're right. Correct? But just like Allah Khayyam, anyways. So when we drop the wow, what's it gonna be? Yeah. I do. So now. Uh, only for mudari. Only for Because here, the wow did not fall between two letters. It fall in. The, it came to the beginning. This principle is only when the wow is in the middle. And it, can, it comes between a fatha or a kasra. Or a kasra and a fatha. But it is not dropped when it is between a fatha and a fatha. Or a kasra and a kasra. But it has to be a kasra and a fatha. Or a fatha and a kasra. Okay. Uh, is it clear, people? Yes. Well, or it's a general principle. Whenever the wall falls between its two enemies, it falls. Because it's not, it's not welcome. When it's between its two enemies, it's not welcome. Do we have the two enemies? Two different, yes. That's why we said it's two enemies. It's it's two enemies, it's clear from the statement that it implies it's two known enemies, which are the Fatha and the Kasra. Well, huh? Well, huh? So we mean by it's two enemies, yeah, I mean it's two known enemies, which are the Fatha and the Kasra. Not one of its kind, like Fatha, Fatha, Kasra, Kasra, no. Only when it's fat hand. Understood? Clear? It will fall between its enemy because it will be the on both sides. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? <coughs> this we're going to do to every verb which has the fat as a well. With the condition that the lamb isn't one of the so you're going to do the same to the mudari, to all the mudari. Same, you're going to drop the one, just drop the one. Automatically now just drop the one. Okay? Let's give you other examples. Mm -hmm. Huh? Just drop the wall. You're gonna have 
Yao Ujibu is going to be on the scale of Yaf Fa'ilu, right? So when you drop the. Yani, here. See. Yao Ujibu. See. Yao Ujibu, right? Okay, this is how it was originally. And Yao Ujibu is on the scale of what? Yaf Fa'ilu. Yaf very good. Yaf Fa'ilu. Now we drop the swab. Now, when we drop the wow, what happens to the scale? Huh? If we drop this wow, what happens to the scale? Yes, yes. Yes. What drops from the scale? The fa. Uh, so, Yajibu is going to be on the scale of? Yaido. Yajibu, Yajibu became obligatory. It becomes obligatory. Yajibu, it becomes obligatory. And Wajaba also means linguistically falling. Wajaba linguistically means what? Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hajj فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ جُنُوبُهَا فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْقَانِعَ وَالْمُعْتَرَفِ Surah number 22, verse number 36. فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ جُنُوبُهَا Then, when they are down on their sides, فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ جُنُوبُهَا So, وَجَبَ linguistically means fell down. And <coughs> technically became obligatory. Became obligatory. Yajibu. Yajibu. Now. Uh, like, uh, uh, and a custom. Yes, uh, yes. Together. So yes. we are you know there, there was. Uh, no, not necessarily. It depends. And he says if there was a fatha and a kasra in a word, does that mean that there was a wow in between? No, no. If it was the mudara of this, yes. So, in order to know that, we have to know the root letters. Uh, indeed. Every word we, we, we change into different forms, we have to be familiar of its root letters in order to do that. Otherwise, we will not bring it into different forms correctly. There will be a mistake. Well, then, yeah. Yeah. Yajib. Wajaba, Yajib. Wa'ada, huh? Yeah. Wajada, yajidu. Wajada, he found. Wajada, he found.
طيب وجد ولا ولا ذات ألف because it's uh, originally a yeah. ولا is ولا yeah. but it's still my mistake because I'm supposed to write a yeah. does that come out clear yes it should be sitting Remembrance. Okay. 
it is enough for now, inshallah, because we took a bit more time, more than we should have. But today I got something interesting for you, inshallah, before we jump into the fifth again. Today, inshallah, I am going to teach you, bi'idhnillah, by the grace of Allah, by the will of Allah, by the deed of Allah, wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah, I'm going to teach you something special today. I'm going to teach you how to memorize lots of things in very little time with not much effort. And this is how the ancient scholars used to do it. Your body has been designed to store so much information, more than a computer does, believe it or not. If an Imam Ahmed says, I memorized a million hadith, he's human, there's no like super, uh, superpowers or something. Everyone can do the same. But, it is because the people before used to depend fully on their memory, that's why they had a strong one. Because there, there were people that did not read or write. So they were depending on memory. That's why when the Prophet wasallam told them in a khutbah that lasted almost a day, told them everything that is to be from the beginning until the end. So the, one of the Sahaba says, فَأَعْلَمُنَا أَحْفَظُنَا So the most knowledgeable of us is the one who memorized the most. So that means it's something natural to them because they depended fully on it. But because in our days we do the opposite we depend fully on what we write. That's why the memory, huh? Wana. Slacken. Alayzikadani, isn't that so? And that's why this, we have this phobia from something called what? Memorizing. Ever since school. Well, there. We have always the saying, am I going to memorize all of that? <coughs> when you can memorize more than that. Okay? But, sometimes you are pressured. And you are asked, and you, you know, back in the days of school, remember when you, know, you come to the end of the term, you have to do the exams, and oh, you're going to go through all that book and try to memorize whatever you can at the last minute. <coughs> Okay, so, so you, you were pressurized, but if you weren't, can you, can you organize your time in a way where you can memorize whatever you want to with little effort and little time? I said yes, and this is how our scholars used to do it. Okay, and today inshallah I'm going to introduce to you My method, which is the same, it's the same way, but I only put it into charts. I only put it into please. Of course, who does not 
want to memorize. It's up to him, no problem. But he gives the paper back. You take one more. Yeah, one more. This is different. This is different. Okay? This is just to help you out. This is to help you out. You know, because, you know, many Muslims, especially today, they wish they memorized the Quran. Right? I want to memorize the Quran. And a lot of them might say, I want to memorize the Quran, but I just, I just can't. I'm too busy. I don't know how to. I wish I can. So that wish, inshallah, can come true easily. If you organize yourself, and put a strong Niyya behind it, of course, after sincerity, and putting your trust in Allah, not putting your trust in your abilities, but which one? Both of them? This is a bit there and a bit here. Here. Okay. Okay. More on the second. Okay, so I'm going to Before you have something close to this, what on earth is this? A dream. This is a chart. Now, as you can see, there are ten ro uh, five rows and ten columns. Okay. For example, the first, which says the fifty, the second, which says the fifty hadith. The, the the first, I'll tell you about it later, what it means. Okay, it's the congregation, the verb congregations. Don't worry about this. Just keep this with you for now, and I and I will introduce it to you later. But let's let's go to the second, which is the fifty hadith. Now the fifty hadith, it says. Above, above the first chart, it says Al Hadith al Awwal. Al Hadith al Awwal. Okay? Leave that. Let's, let's, for example, give you another example. Let's give you from the Quran. If you memorize just three verses a day, three verses, in five years you'll finish the whole Quran. Just three verses a day. Just three. One, two, three, that's all. Three verses. In five years, you finish the Quran. You memorize the full Quran. Okay? Let's give you, for example, this is verses from one to five. Okay? And then verses from six to eight. 
And then verses from uh, 9 to uh, 11. And then verses from 12 to uh, to 14. Okay? I said 1 to 5 because Al-Baqarah, I'm talking about Al-Baqarah, and Al-Baqarah, the first five, it's better that you memorize all of them. Okay? So how do you do this? Why five, uh, five rows, five prayers? Five prayers. So this is Fajr. After Fajr, and this is after Dhuhr, and this is after Asr, and this is after Maghrib, and this is after Isha. Okay? So you're going to repeat each portion that you want to memorize after each prayer ten times only. So for example, and you're going to give each portion a certain line that signifies it and indicates it. So for example, this first portion will have this line, and the second portion will have this line, and the, sec uh, the third portion will have this line, and the fourth portion will have this line. Okay? Now, Let's say the first portion I want to take it. So I'm going to read it. Alif Lam Mim, Dalik Al Kitab Ula Rayba Fi. Read, just read from the book. Dalik Al Kitab Ula Rayba Fi. He would have been with Tamil and the Rila Yumino, 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 Okay? Then read it again. Alif Lam Mim Dalik Al Kitab Ula Rayba Fihi Huda Lil Muttaqeen etc. That twice. Each box represents one time. Okay? Then do it a third time. Then a fourth. Then a fifth. See this line represents what? The first portion, and the sixth, and the seventh, and the eighth, and the ninth, then the tenth. Yes, give it a rest. Put it down. Ten times. Ten times. So this chart will be four portions. Uh, huh? This whole chart will be four portions. Yes, four portions. At the end we'll have a star kind of thing? Yeah, I will follow you up. I will, each chart you finish, I will sign. You have finished. So one, five verses, ten times. Yeah. Of course, three verses. Your your aim is three verses, but I the first portion I made five wide because the first part of a kapara is a full page, so it's better to memorize it all. Otherwise, the the rest is three, 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 three. Okay. So give it to rest. Go do whatever you want to do. Work under the dark. Meet people. When you reach to Allah, no, no worries. Allah, just put it down. No worries. Go to Allah, pray the Lord. After the Lord, do the same. Alif la mim dalik al kitab wa la You will notice that when you read it the second time, you're reading it a lot more easier. Reading from the book. Just reading from the book. Okay? <coughs> Read it once, twice, thrice, until you finish, ten. Then give it a rest. Go do whatever you want to do. Eat, stay with the family, play with the kids. Al Asr? Not nowadays, huh? Nowadays it's after Asr you do that. Uh, after Asr, go back at it again. You'll notice that you're starting to memorize it. Just by reading. 
Just by reading. I don't want you to, to, do, to do this. Just read it. Just read it. You will notice that you are starting to memorize it automatically due to the repeating. Okay? So you're going to do it for another 10 times. Tell Maghrib, after 30 times, if you had a bit of, yeah, if you tried memorizing before, you should memorize it after 30. If you memorize it, start reading it by heart. Okay? Even if you memorize some and not the other, read whatever you. Any if you and if la mean that they can get up if you if you know what comes next la rayba fihi udan lil muttaqin aladina yuminu na bilad no problem slowly slowly when you memorize it when you pick it up in memory start reading it by heart okay that ten times after maghrib ten times after isha when you finish alas that is the first first portion memorized. Okay, then you come, and this is only one day. Now, Al Fatiha, how many times do you read? 17. Huh? 17, at least. 17, yani when you learn Al Fatiha, didn't it take you just one day to memorize it? What do you think? Did it take you one day to memorize it, brother? Well, I think when I was new, I, I was, even pronunciation was difficult for me. Okay. If you were given the fact you had to read seven times, 17 times in one day, 17 times, maybe not the first day, but the second day should, you should have it memorized without even you having the intention to memorize it. Just by reading it. Isn't that so? So this means that the key to memorizing is just repeating. There's no big thing behind it or anything, or superpowers or anything, no. Just repeating anything you repeat, you, you will eventually memorize. Not only will you memorize, you will have confidence in reading out any time you want. Because Al-Fatiha, if I dare you to make a mistake, will you accept this challenge? Yes. Huh? Why? Because you repeated it so much, so much, that you're confident that you will not make a single mistake, not even in the harakah. Correct? Why? All this because you have repeated it enough. So if you repeat anything, anything else, won't you memorize it the same? Huh? See? So there's nothing big to it. Now when you come to the second portion, If you don't want to start in Baqarah, start from Juz'anna if, if you don't memorize it yet. If you don't mem didn't memorize Juz'a Amma, start from Juz'a Amma. When you finish Juz'a Amma, go back to Al-Baqarah and start from the beginning. So, six to eight, you finished it once, twice, three times, four times, etc. until you finish. After each prayer. Next day. Next day. Third day, you start with the third portion. Once, twice, thrice, etc. Fourth portion, the fourth day, Allah. So even first time you take five words and then you take three three? Three three three, yes, yes. If you want to take three three from the beginning, no problem. Okay. Some of you might say, no, no, ten times too much. No problem, do it five times. Do it five times. Don't worry, I mean, no, no one's after you. <coughs> Do 
Do it five times, but yani the point is give yourself breaks. Give yourself breaks. If you memorize something at one go, don't memorize at one go 50 times all together. No, it will go at one go. But if you give breaks, you will notice that it has a great effect. <coughs> and you memorize it quicker than when you do at one go. Okay? So if you don't want to do 10 times, do 5 times, do it this way. First, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. Oh, you finished a column. That's beautiful. When you see that you finished a column, you have accomplished something. Okay? Make it for two days. Each portion, two days. Because first you were doing ten, you were covering the whole chart. If you want to do, do five, no problem. See, five, just five times. Not to eat prayer. And you end up memorizing. Every one time, five, five times. For, yes. Every one time. No, every prayer, five times. <laughs> every prayer, five times. Five times, five times, five times, five times, five times. So this is one day. Then five times, five times, five times, five times, five times. So the second day. If ten times is too much for you, do it five times. When do you review it? Let's say you've done one day. Huh? The next day, how many times should you do it? Uh, when do you review it? After you finish. Now you memorized it, right? Then I'll give you another chart, a chart for reviewing. Memorizing you finished. Now you're going to review. Review, don't worry about it. And it, review is not like something that you have to do. Yeah, any, that you have to. Uh, yeah, any, it's not like the memorizing. Yeah, any, you can do it like three times a week. Once. Or once every day. Once only, every day. No problem. Okay? So with this second chart that I gave you, the 50 hadith that we're taking, al hadith al awwal that means the first hadith. Yet yani from the saying of the Prophet, from the saying, from, from the beginning, it says, um, عن أمير المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب نعم عن أمير المؤمنين أبي حفص عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه أنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته في الدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة يكيهها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه. This is the Hadith الأول. And you repeat this ten times after each prayer. Then the portion after it is from Rawahu and then Asah al Kutub. And this is the the part which يعني the what it says after the Hadith. Rawahu Imamal Muhaddithin Abu Abdullah. محمد بن إسماعيل بن محمد بن إسماعيل بن إسماعيل بن إبراهيم بن مغيرة بن بن الباح البخاري وأبو الحسين مسلم بن الحجاج المسلم القشيري النيسابوري في صحيحيهما الذين هما أصح الكتب المصنفة bit by bit okay so I want us to do a little test, okay, with those who wish to memorize. So we're going to try, now for example, uh, I just want you to try the first two, the first two portions. The first two portions which you have with you, says what? <coughs> This is the, your first portion. 
going to be your first portion of the text. So you're just going to read it from the book. If you own the book, you can get it from Al Bukhari uh, bookstore in Dubai or any branch of Dubai public libraries. Dubai uh, library. Dubai library bookstore. Okay? No, no, take this one. Anyone has the. Yes. Can you pass it over, please? Can you just pass it over? No, no, get up. Don't pass it. In charge of where? Okay, so this is the best print of the 40 hadith. This is the best print ever. This is the full text of al nawawi how he wrote it. All the, the, the previous prints are not full. picture out of this without me in it and you can inshallah get it from me back. Okay. In charge of which uh, bookstore? Sahaba? No, not Sahaba, but in the same book. I didn't say it was Sahaba, maybe in the same book it is there. Maybe Al Bashir, the one after Sahaba. Before Dar Salaam. Before Dar Salaam? How in the same book? No, before the Salam is also Sahaba. Oh, before we should I coin that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He means before, yeah. Okay, in that row, you can find it, as I said, in Bukhari, in Dubai, if you live in Dubai, in, uh, or in uh, uh, Dubai library bookstore, is all over the place. So you can, because they are the uh, sponsors of, of this publishing house. So you can just, you know, go ahead. And <laughs> okay, so Al Hadith Al Awwal. I want you to try, take a day of the five days that you're not going to see me. Just one day. And try this method. Just one day. See what happens. And I look forward to your feedback. Next uh, Friday, we're going to ask all of you, what did you did you gain in this new experience, which might be new to most of you? Okay? Al Hadith al Awwal, then the second portion is it says from from the word Rawahu to Asah al Qutub al to the last day, to the end of the, of the first Hadith. This is your first portion. Easy? A lot easier, yes? Then, second portion from فَمَنْ كَانَتْ إِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَإِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ إِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُسِيبُهَا أَوْ مَرَأَةٌ يَكِبُهَا فَإِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجَرَ إِلَيْهِ this is going to be what? Your second portion. Your fourth portion from Rawahu to the word Al Bukhari. The fourth portion from Wa Abu Husayn to Al Musannafa. There you go. The most important thing is that you organize yourself. 
So there, you've got four portions of that first hadith. So, whoever found it easy the first, then do the first. But let us try and do the, this, this second dividing first. Let's try this. We start, start off easy. We start off easy. So you have four days from now. Yani, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'll see you on Friday. Try this method just once in your life and see what it does to you. If you discover things about yourself that you never knew existed, <coughs> you can, this is a starting point in your life, inshallah. Change a new experience that you are going to cherish and uh, and might even love and might even be addicted to. Then you can memorize the Quran after that, etc. Well, then age is not a barrier. Age is not a barrier. We all heard about the eighty year old woman who memorized who con con reverted and memorized the Quran in the age of 80 80 <coughs> the scholar said the problem is not the age it is only that when, when someone becomes older he has more responsibilities that's all so with more responsibilities uh, a lot of your time is taken. But if you organize your time, I'll do all my responsibilities, but just 10 minutes. 10 minutes only. If you can't spare 10 minutes after each prayer, I'm sorry. This is, the shaitan is deceiving you. Because you're not supposed to give. You have to give more to your need than to your dunya. So if you insist, don't give 100% to your dunya. 90% to your dunya, give 10% to your dunya. Just 10%. And this is even less than 10%. Sorry? This is like an hour from 24 hours. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> now. No, no, you don't, you don't want English. Why you want English for? But we're learning Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> don't get used to English. Because if you get used to English, you're always going to need a translation. Why are we teaching you Arabic in the first place here? So you can learn in Arabic. Okay? English, you can get everywhere. Hadith, you can get online. Online, go to searchtruth.com or .org or .net or whatever, and you'll find the, all the translations and the interpretations of the Hadith. But do you want to settle with that? If you want to settle with that, you choose. No problem. But what's the point of all of this? For you to learn Arabic and understand the Quran and the Sunnah in the proper way? Because I tell you, a lot of those translations that are out there, they have, m they have many mistakes. And I can prove it. And I can prove it today. If you read any book, you will see that there are a lot of mistakes, except if the person was back in both languages, was well versed in both languages. Otherwise, read me any, any book today, and I will show you. Well, okay. So why you want the English? Better get the real thing. The main thing. Any other questions? Can you find this uh, Quranic chapter like this? To memorize Quran? If you want, I'll make it for you. I have it ready, by the way. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have it ready in my in my laptop. Yeah. If you agree. Yeah.
Yeah? If you want, I can bring it to you next weekend. But you want for Anna or for Al-Baqarah? If you don't memorize Anna yet, memorize Juz'a Anna. When you finish memorizing Juz'a Anna, no, no. The best they said is to start from the beginning. Why? Because when you go from down to above with the Quran, it's like you're climbing a mountain. But when you start from Al Baqarah downwards, it's like you're going down a mountain, down a hill. Which is easier? Going down. Well there? What does that mean? That means when you memorize, why they said memorize Juz'a Amma first? To have something to read in the Asana. Something convenient and practical to read in the Asana. You finish that, go to Al-Baqarah. Why? Because when you memorize the biggest surah, you will see the surah after it, even though it's, it's a bit smaller, you will see it a lot smaller. Why? Because you memorize the biggest. And you remember the biggest, you say, oh, okay, this, alhamdulillah, this is, a, this is uh, uh, 80 verses less. Okay? Now you'll find this a great difference even though it's not. Okay? But if, when you start from, from smaller to bigger, you say, oh, smaller, oh, no, there's 10 verses more. There's 100 verses more. There's 200 verses more. And this slackens you off. So they said, the wisest is to start from the beginning. Don't worry. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ Allah made it easy for you to memorize. Don't worry. The Quran, especially the Quran, you start memorizing it, it will just go in. Trust me. scholars used to, but they didn't like to do charts. They just repeated. They used to do it. They used to repeat certain mm -hmm. times after certain prayers, for example. But they, they just, you know, this is just just writing it down. That's all. Noting it down. That's all. That's all. That's all the difference. We have an Imam Shirazi, for example. Is one of the greatest a'imma of the Shafi'i school. He says there isn't a matter of dispute except that I have revised a thousand times. A thousand times. And here you get 50 for memorizing. For revising, you're going to get 900. 900 times for revising. Don't worry about the 900, because the 900 you can just do it like, you know, once every day until you finish. If you do 20 after each prayer, just revising, 20 times after each prayer, in 10 days you'll finish the 900. In 10 days. Well, okay. So, inshallah, try. You won't lose anything. Might be, you know, tying yourself to a certain thing after each prayer it might be, you know, annoying at first, but just try it. Because I know that you will find out something about yourself that you never knew you could do. So try it and see, inshallah, you have four days, those four portions, okay? We meet, inshallah, next Friday, and we'll take your feedback. Since there is only seven minutes left, we'll call it a day, inshallah. Any questions? No. How many questions so we have seven minutes for questions. No. How many questions does the scholars take? Huh? Yeah. It different. It different. Some scholars repeat it a hundred times, some fifty times. How many questions? Ah, this. It depends on the scholar. It depends on the uh, how strong his memory. When you, when you strengthen your memory, 
you will be able to, to memorize more and even more as you, the more you memorize, the more, because the memory is like a muscle, it's like you're working it out and it's becoming stronger and bigger and bigger and stronger. So it could reach to a point where you, you just read something once and you memorize it. I'm serious. Oh, you hear something once. Yes, you hear something once and you memorize it. Like that. A shaf this is a shafi. It used to be the same. A shafi memorized al muwatta of al Imam Malik, which had 2,000 hadiths. He memorized it in three nights. He memorized it in three nights, then went and studied it under al Imam Malik, under his author, under its author. As a matter of fact, I know today, or, or it reached me that the Sheikh Abdul Razak al Abbad and Allah is this correct or not? But he memorized the Quran in two, in, in two months. The whole Quran in two months. As a matter of fact, there's a scholar who recently died. Mauritanian scholar and he said he said if the books of all four madhabs were thrown in the sea and completely lost I and my student would be able to bring it back him with the book and me with the explanation So this might seem that like it's you know like it's just uh, uh, yeah any, uh, what do you call it what's the word for it might seem to be any uh, uh, yeah, it's yes but it's it's not really your body is capable of that you create it this way so it's not that I'm asking you to memorize the four books of the methods no that's not what I'm trying to do. But I'm, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, open for you the door that you can walk into. That's all. The rest is up to you. What you want to memorize, you memorize. Now. Yes. No. It's an independent book. Yes. Yes. Yes, at the Mufrad, but Bukhari has, of course, has not, not authentic hadith because Al Bukhari did not mean to put uh, all the, yeah, he like uh, what he did, he did not do in this book what he did in that book. No. What is the meaning of uh, madhab when you say? Uh, madhab, very good. Madhab, the word madhab means, technically of course, what the scholar chooses of an opinion based on evidence and died choosing it. This is the word madhab. Whatever opinion a scholar chose according to evidence and died on that opinion, that's called madhab. This is the definition of the word madhab. So if, you, if that is the definition of the word madhab, then all of us are following madhabs. <coughs> Correct or not? Because all of us are following an opinion of a scholar which he said according to a proof, and I say it. This is the word of method. And that is why the layman or the person who does not have the tools to extract the rulings of the evidence is not a scholar. He is not a scholar. A scholar is the one who has the tools which enable him 
to derive the rulings from their evidence. The other one who follows any of any opinion. Now, majority of Muslims they follow. None of them follow an opinion other than opinion chosen by a scholar before them. Correct? Do you pray Maghrib before? <coughs> hmm? You pray three. Why? Because the scholars agreed upon that. Well then, do you, uh, for example, do you uh, make wudu from eating camel meat? Huh? Yes? That's an opinion of, a, of some scholars, not all. So you're following an opinion. Uh, do you, um, for example, did he mention any opinion? Any opinion which you embrace, this opinion, you only chose it because it exists in Islamic jurisprudence. Therefore, you are following a madhab. Whether you like it or not, you're following a madhab. This would result in you following, following a madhab. Why are you following a madhab? Because you do not have the necessary tools to understand the Quran and the Sunnah, which the scholars have. So as long as you don't have the tools, you will always be a follower. But when you have the tools, you will what? You will start not abiding by a certain opinion and you will uh, search uh, w w with the tools that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and get to the ruling. Well then, no. Do you have to restrict yourself to a specific mother? No, you, you don't have to. You don't have to, but it is best. It is best to follow a certain method until you gain all the tools. That's if you want to gain all the tools. It is best to follow a certain method and not follow it blindly, but follow of it what you see the evidence supporting it. But be on that method. And being on a certain method does not, does, does not contradict that you choose other opinions while, while doing so. That means you might discover that this particular opinion in this method is weaker than another. So you choose another. But you're still following, in general, that method. But you think it's weaker. Or do we have the right to say that it's weaker? You don't have the right to say that, but you have the right to understand that if you can. So if you understand that, you follow what you are convinced in being closer to the proof. Not you passing the judgment, but because you being convinced of it. So you don't say that this is weaker and this is stronger. No, you don't say that. You just say that I am convinced that this is strong. I am convinced in this being stronger. I am convinced in this being weaker. And that's if you understood. If you don't understand, you follow. Now we, we can label ourselves uh, that we are of certain madhab. No doubt. Of course we can. Because you, what you're following now, the opinions of who? Shafi. Shafi. We can label ourselves. Yes. Of course. By the anonymous agreement of the scholars. All the scholars. Ibn Kathir was a, was a Shafi. And Nawawi was a Shafi. Name any scholars. He was... He was on a certain method, and he's gone. Now. Now. What are the tools? The tools. Oh, the tools. The tools we have to. We, if you want me to explain the tools, we have. We need a full dress, a full lesson, a full hour to explain it. He has to be. He has to know the Arabic, the, the linguistics, all sciences of linguistics. And mainly grammar, morphology, and <coughs> eloquence. Okay, he has to know the ijma, all the matters the scholars agreed upon. He has to uh, to uh, be aware of the tafsir. 
He has to be aware of most of the hadith. And the scholars have mentioned this in uh, the books uh, of Usul al-Fiqh, the foundations of jurisprudence. They mention in it a chapter which, which says Shurut al-Ijtihad, yani the conditions of investigating in the Quran and the Sunnah. So there are many tools. So it's not a joke. Now, any other question? Yeah. Can you define ijazah? Ijazah? Yeah. Two times of what? Ijazah. Two times of ijazah, what do you mean? You know when, um, for example, if a student... Ha, ha, ijazah. Ijazah is, is a, I mean, it could be a permission to narrate or a permission to teach. An ijazah is a permission to narrate. I mean, for example, there is a chain of narration exists until this day. That means that there is a connected link to, between us and the Prophet by the chain of narration. So for example, I have a chain of narration from myself until Al-Bukhari until the Prophet So if I, for example, give you an ijazah, that means I permit you to narrate Al-Bukhari all of what is in Bukhari to the Prophet وسلم, through my chain of narration. So you can say, I narrate from my shaykh that he narrated from his shaykh and so on until you reach the Prophet So, hmm. so how many just different from a is a recommendation. A tazkiyah is when a scholar recommends a certain person in, in his knowledge or in his akhlaq or in his deen. Is this different? Yeah, there's difference of course in Tazkiyah. Tazkiyah could be in knowledge, it could be in akhlaq, it could be in deen, etc. So, uh, can I just, just for the sake of just knowing, who is, who is willing to start this, this week, this week? Who's willing to start? Who's willing to give it a try? Thank you, Michelle. All the best.